All right, so I hadn't done any videos in a while, but I wanted to do a little short video here to show the um, front, uh, what's the front paneling, and also what will eventually be the ceiling. There are a number of different ways you can do this. Um, I'm trying to show the inside here. But you can see here how I put the pine boards into the trailer, and this is what you will see as the inside ceiling of the trailer. This will run all the way up the top and it'll cover the entire roof. Uh, basically all I did is we decided what kind of ceiling we wanted. We decided we wanted to use these pine boards. And you can see here I've got one of the boards. These are about three and a half inches wide. I believe they're uh, five sixteenths inch thick. Um, we put a couple of maybe three coats I think it was of uh, polyurethane on them. And darkened them up just a little bit you can see back here on the uh, back wall how we did the same thing and the same boards we used on the wall so you'll have these entire boards all the way around you above you behind you throughout the inside of the trailer but basically all we did was cut the boards to be the same width as the floor because you'll see once we stand the walls up that the floor and the inside walls are um, I'm sorry, the floor and uh, where the walls meet up, um, the boards need to be that same distance. Now, I did actually cut them about an eighth or a three sixteenths inch shorter. That just gives you a little bit of room to, um, to play with so that when you're putting these in, they're not too tight uh, in this direction. You don't want them too tight. If they're too loose, it's okay. You've got a little bit of room here to play with. But basically what I did was just use my PL Premium. And I use the PL Premium right here on the edge, put a little bit of bead there, a little bit of bead on the other side. And then one key thing that I figured out was I put a little bit of the PL Premium, and you can see it right here. I put it on the back side of this board here. What that does is that makes it so that when it squeezes out, it doesn't squeeze into the inside. Um, that it stays on the, the back of the board, and I'll show you here if we put one up there like that it will squeeze out the back side here uh, don't put it on top of the bead or don't put it in in the groove um, if you put it on the on the top of the tongue rather or in the groove it'll squeeze out the front and that, that stuff is really really nasty to have to clean up um, I did a few of these at the time because um, these boards are not perfectly straight they're not going to be temperature and, and humidity the boards are going to warp a little bit they're going to change um, but what I did do was I would put about four or five of them together put a clamp on them and hold them for 30 minutes or so give the PL premium in the in the middle sections here a little time to dry and then also after I put them on I put a couple of nails here you can see I just used my nail gun and I put a couple of nails in there to hold it um, this is pretty strong it has a little bit of flex to it um, but you have to remember that the entire construction of a teardrop is the sum of the parts. Um, there's not one single part on this thing that is really that strong, uh, but it's the sum of the parts. Uh, of course, you want to make sure. I've got a couple of temporary spars here. You can see one here and one on top here. I've kind of got some other boards and stuff I've got pre-cut laying up there. But these are cut, and I've got these walls nice and square. Uh, that is one thing that you want to make sure that you have uh, figured out and, and straight is that these walls are good and square when you put these boards in because as soon as you put these boards in these walls get really really tight uh, which adds to the structural integrity of the whole unit adds to the the, um, the stress skin and to the to the box of the trailer and that really adds to the, the strength um, so once you start putting these boards in and once you've got the top in uh, that thing is going to be where it's at and it's not going to move. So you want to make sure that those walls are square and, uh, and that the dimensions are right on those. Uh, one other thing that you'll note, kind of just to give you a layout here, the next thing after we get these boards, we'll run these boards all the way around and all the way to the back there, all the way across the roof. Um, you can see back here how there's a space. They'll run all the way back here and even into this cabinet back here when we get to the back they'll stop uh, let's see they'll stop right there on that board and so the, the last one will be flush 
with that board. Then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll put our insulation and our wiring on top. I've already got some of the wiring here ran. Um, these are actually wires here that are coming out of the walls and our uh, wiring is all going to terminate in a tongue box that's going to sit out here. So th these wires here will actually come across and will be inside of the wall uh, cavity here and they'll come out the front into the tongue box. That's why they're just kind of hanging out there. Um, so we'll put the, the wires in, we'll put the spars in, we'll put the insulation in, and then we'll cover it in. Um, one thing that we did different here, and a lot of people you'll see you use a birch plywood. I've got a piece of eighth inch birch here that I've been playing around with for another project. Um, but people will use a, an eighth inch birch and run it along the top here. Um, some people try to use quarter inch, and I'm not going to say quarter inch won't bend, um, or even 3 16th inch won't bend, but it's really, really tough. You really need eighth inch birch. Um, and depending on you, where you live, that may be really difficult to find. Um, I like Baltic birch. They sell Baltic birch in uh, five by five sheets that are eighth inch. And depending on where you live, that may cost you anywhere from 15 to uh, 40 bucks. Uh, East Coast side of the country, that's a little more difficult to find. If you live on the West Coast, uh, you can find Baltic birch at a lot of different places. Five by five sheets work out good because um, when you bend those, you're, vir you're going to virtually use the entire sheet of plywood. You might cut off an inch or less uh, because it's, with this trailer, it's five foot approximately. Um, but on a four by eight sheet, you would bend it across the, the four width, so you're wasting three feet of it. Um, but five by five sheets work out perfectly. So, um, anyways, that's about it for this video. Um, basically, you've got your boards, they're pre finished. Please, please, if you can, pre finish the, that stuff before you put it in. It will make your life much easier. Uh, trust me, I did this on the last one. <laughs> it, it is much easier to pre finish these boards. I've already gotten quite a few of these boards here pre finished. Um, much easier to do that on a sawhorse in your garage sitting out in front of you than it is to try and do that um, up over your head once you're inside of this thing uh, sitting on your knees. You, you don't want to do that unless you absolutely have to. So uh, pre-finish your boards, put your boards in or put your plywood in, whichever you choose to do. Um, use you a few nails here. If you don't have a nail gun, you could, you could probably use a staple gun if you're using thin wood. Um, or just use some little small brads. And again, these uh, these nails really aren't, they don't add a whole lot of structural support. They just kind of hold it to the glue dries. Um, you could you could virtually assemble this entire trailer uh, with glue. And it would be, I would feel just as good about it driving down the road because the, the, the glue that we're using here really, really holds well. Um, and in many cases, as much, uh, the, the bond of the glue is much stronger than the wood itself. So, um, that's about it. If you got any questions, give me a shout down in the uh, comments. Um, if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube page uh, and sharing it with your friends. Um, so, anyways, uh, this is the wood on the roof, on the ceiling, and on the next video, I will uh, start working on the wiring and the insulation inside the roof, and we'll kind of go over that. Anyways, thank you.